Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, today is another episode of Beefy Thoughts. Um, to start this one off, I, I, I thought long and hard about what I really wanted this to be. Um, and how I wanted Beefy Thoughts to really work as a, um, as a series. I could have easily spent time and spoken about the EDP situation that just happened where he is apologizing for the cupcake incident that happened, I think it was two years ago now. Um, I could continue harping on uh, Colleen, but I said also I didn't want to do that. So I came to the decision that I would just leave this as a sort of place for me to just talk not about anything in particular but just talk um now there may be days where it is something like an edp situation or something like today where i'm talking about something different today i am uh going to be talking about game of thrones um i really enjoy the tv show uh, before they ruined it as many people do um i haven't gotten around to reading the books i started the first one um but it, it just wasn't working out with some other things that i had to do so i i'm a little behind on the books but i i generally know what the books have in store to offer um but i just wanted to talk about this and, and go into this uh saying that i haven't seen house of the dragon um so i can't really speak on house of the dragon but i will be talking about um game of thrones now like i just said i was a really big fan of the show and i have recently begun to rewatch it and i'm at the uh episode right before the red wedding um Spoilers ahead for anyone that hasn't watched it at all, but uh, at this point, I believe you should have watched it. Um, if you were going to. Enough time has passed where I can speak about it freely. Um, I I don't know exactly where to begin. I don't go into these with a script. I, I just I talk uh, as I think, which is which is dangerous for uh, for me, but. <laughs> It's, it's what I want to do with this. I, I want this to be more of a freeform type of video. Um, not that my other videos aren't freeform, but um, I really want Beefy Thoughts to really be about me thinking about <laughs> random things. Um, and today when I was watching Game of Thrones, it, it really just hit me how far um, the show has fallen and I'm pretty much gonna rehash a lot of stuff that I'm sure plenty of other critics of the show have said so this isn't gonna be something groundbreaking by any means but it's just my overall thoughts on the show pre uh, destroying it and you know post um, pre destruction I think it it potentially could have been the best show of all time. Um, that show has, that, that position for best show of all time has since then been um, changed. I feel that um, other shows are better. Um, and I think my favorite show is probably the best show in the world, but I am extremely biased. So that that's a, that's a conversation for a different day. There, there's there's a lot to unpack with my favorite show just like there is with game of thrones um however game of thrones had the backing of george rr R. martin who i'm not particularly the biggest fan of everything about george rr R. martin um but the world that he created in a song of ice and fire is beautiful it truly is and 
the amount of work and background he put into it is nothing short of monumental. Um, I think it's the closest thing we have to a Tolkien type of uh, series, which obviously was intended on George R. R. Martin's part to some extent. Um, obviously, he also wanted to break a lot of fantasy tropes, but I think with the amount of depth that's in it, it's very much so one of the few like Tolkien-esque things we have uh, in the modern day. And, you know, David and Dan were creating the show, or directing the show, I should say, and the first four seasons were phenomenal, and they followed the books pretty heavily. The pacing was great, the dialogue was great, the character development was great, um, character interaction was, was beautiful, you had stellar performances from Peter Dinklage, Sean Bean, Kit Harrington, so many good performances. You really got invested with the characters. Um, you you were just so into it. And then season five comes along. And this is where the decline starts to show. Um, with, with the decline really shows with Tyrion. Um, Tyrion loses a lot of his character after killing Shay and his father Tywin. And Varys tries to help him once he's in Essos. But Tyrion never goes back to who he was. He was a character who was extremely smart, able to talk his way out of situations, and that was just lost after season four and when he was handed the queen for Daenerys Targaryen he failed at pretty much everything he did as her hand um, he failed in marine he consistently failed her once they got to Westeros um, just completely it's character suicide. What they did to him. Um, other characters like Jon Snow pretty much lost all character development. Um, a lot of people like the Battle of Bastards. I'd argue that it wasn't amazing since there was a, a, a huge level of plot armor after they stopped adhering directly to the books but it was the last time I feel that John was a character I feel like after that he wasn't really a character anymore which was really upsetting because John was one of my favorite characters when I first started watching uh, my, f my favorite character is Ned Stark followed very closely by Tywin Lannister um, but they, they killed his character pretty much, which if they said like, oh, this is a result of the fact that I've been resurrected and this is what resurrection did to me, you know, it would at least make sense to some extent, but it wasn't even that. It was just, yeah, this is Jon Snow now lost everything that made him him and we don't have anything for it um there's also a lot of issue with the tactics in season 8 um Daenerys Targaryen constantly forgetting about the Iron Fleet she forgot about the Iron Fleet three times Three times the Iron Fleet ambushed Daenerys. Once at Castle Rock. I don't remember when the other one was, honestly, but I remember it happened. Um, and the other time, when she was flying 
Dro on Drogon, and they shot down Rhaegal with the Scorpions. She was warned of them earlier in the same episode. Like five minutes prior, she was warned, and it was just completely forgotten about. And D and D even say that it was just forgotten about by Daenerys, which is very frustrating because it doesn't make sense. It's not a plot element to the story, just to like, oh, I forgot, sorry. So, a little frustrating. That's not here or there, though. Um, Arya Stark killing the Night King makes no sense. Um, you know, they did that because they wanted to subvert expectations because they had made it so that John was basically set up to kill the Night King, which would make sense. Yes, you have to subvert expectations to some extent, but you also need a narratively pleasing story. And it was not narratively pleasing at all to subvert ex expectations like that. Uh, even George R. R. Martin says, like, subverting expectations is nice, but it also still needs to be a good story. And that makes it a very, very poor story. Um, and I like Arya a lot. I think she's a great character. You know, before they kill her character, basically. But she was a very interesting character. And they kind of just shit on her, too. Um, anything that she was doing in Bravos was just chores, basically. Um, I'm trying to think of some other characters that they just outright ruined. Oh, Jamie Lannister. Oh, <laughs> they destroyed Jamie Lannister's entire character arc with basically one line. He was having a conversation with Tyrion after. Uh, him and Brienne had had sex, and he was talking about how he never really cared about the innocence of King's Landing, which is not true. Part of Jamie's whole character arc is the fact that he killed Ares the Mad King because he was worried about the innocence, because he didn't want to kill his own father. But he was going to set wildfire upon the entirety of King's Landing. And we hear that in season three, when he's talking to Brienne when they're both in the bathtub. Yet, now, it doesn't matter anymore. He never actually felt that way. It just killed his character. He died with Cersei in a really dumb way killed by some bricks falling on them you'd think that they'd give characters like that such better endings because especially Cersei Cersei was so well done Lena Headey did just an amazing job with her and they just gave her such a poor ending now you know they didn't have the books to go off of but, you could have written it a little bit better. Um, and all of this, um, and more stuff, culminates in to the fact that they were um, contracted to make a Star Wars show. And that Star Wars show was taking precedent for them. They didn't want to work on Game of Thrones anymore, they wanted to work on a Star Wars show. So they rushed the ending of Game of Thrones, and they lost that Star Wars job because Season 8 sucked. Such is life. Um, it, it's really upsetting because I was super into it. Um, I'm into just fantasy as a whole. I love playing Dungeons and Dragons, uh, love Lord of the Rings, the Elder Scrolls, all these things. World of Warcraft. So something like this is super fantasy and it just didn't matter to D&D. &D. They just killed it. 
Um, another thing is Danny's snap in King's Landing, which makes no sense whatsoever. And I know plenty of people have spoken about this at, at length. It makes no sense for Danny to go crazy and burn the entire city down. There was nothing that set her off. Um, the people had surrendered. They were ringing the bells, which, ha after having recently watched Battle of the Blackwater, um, the bells did not mean surrender <laughs> originally. So they changed the meaning of the bells, which is funny. But so they were there. Um, she she just went crazy out of nowhere. She just there was nothing. Nothing that would suggest that she should go crazy like that. And then to cap that all off, they had John kill her. And John, while I think if that's the path they want to go down, John killing her probably was the best narratively, but um, then Drogon didn't kill him after he killed his mom. John not dying tends to not make much sense in general. Um, not just from Drogon, even if you want to say Drogon, knowing that John was Targaryen, didn't want to kill him. Um, despite, you know, us viewers knowing that John can be burned, he's not like Daenerys in that sense. But um, Grey Worm didn't kill him. The Unsullied are extremely loyal to Daenerys Targaryen. And Grey Worm, after seeing Missande and Danny killed, he has nothing left. Why would he allow John to run free after that? You know, obviously at the end he goes to the north as a proto king beyond uh, not proto post king beyond the wall type of person. But it, it, you know, Grey Worm has no way of knowing that. There's no check by Grey Worm to see if he went up north. And there's no reason for John to go up north. Um, Sansa becoming the queen of the north. I'm not the biggest fan of Sansa's character in general. Uh, probably made the most sense out of everything though. Bran becoming the king of the six kingdoms, however, does not make sense. Um, for a couple reasons. He's the Three-Eyed Raven. The Three-Eyed Raven isn't technically supposed to hold any lands. Um, and he said in previous moments that he didn't even want to rule. He was just Three-Eyed Raven. Um, so, you know, the infamous Brand the Broken scene. Um, and no one contested that. The Starks just own Westeros. They have... There's a Stark on the throne. But there's six kingdoms. There's a Stark on the throne with the North. And there's, there's a Stark leading the Free Folk. In the Northern North doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Not a singular person at that meeting was against that. Tyrion was alive, which also doesn't make sense. There's no reason why Tyrion should be alive when he was the one that told Jon to kill Danny. It was just such a poorly thought out mess. And, to make matters worse, Tyrion somehow became Hand of the King again. Um, he 
even though when he was the hand for Daenerys, he failed at every singular point. He was terrible. They didn't know what to do with his character after Tywin and Shay were killed. Um, it's just really upsetting, uh, the amount of character suicide in Game of Thrones. And the reason I ended up wanting to talk about this in particular, one, because I have been re-watching Game of Thrones, and two, because of just how interested I am in fantasy as a whole. And I, I think it's just interesting how quickly something so great can just become nothing because of two dudes who didn't want to do it it's due diligence anyway thank you so much for watching have a great day and remember to stay beefy